And now the Democratic response. Good evening. I'm Representative Jay Hughes. The state of the state is same old, same old. I love my Mississippi, but the simple facts are that we're still last in education, last in mental health and health care access, first in poverty, and first in the brain drain of our young graduates. If we're number one in problems, then we sure ought to be number one in solutions. Unfortunately, the policies that impact our quality of life have merely gone unchanged and underfunded. Simply ignoring a problem is not a solution. Over half of Mississippi towns are smaller than 1,500 people, and a Golden Shovel Award doesn't educate our children or put food on the table in your average Mississippi home. So let's talk about six real problems and six real solutions. Our first problem is equality in public education. The simple reality is that there is no equality with the type of school buildings, classroom supplies, or technology from one school district to the next. And it's this division that continues to keep Mississippi in last place every year. Every single school should have at least the exact same basic resources for the children. Not one school district having new computers and robotics machines, and the school district next door having calculators and popsicle sticks. We are also testing students to death. Testing is not teaching. It is nothing but profits for testing corporations and campaign contributions for politicians. A simple solution for equal and better public schools is to quit playing games with the funding. As Governor Barber and Governor Bryant have both proclaimed before the privatization dollars made their way to Jackson, education is not an expense. It is an economic investment and the best one we can make. But politicians who don't have a clue about classrooms just can't leave it alone. It doesn't matter what the legislatures name a new formula if they are not going to fund it every single year. And we also need to stop the standardized testing and stop the exit exams like so many other states have done. Let our students take the ACT the taxpayers are already paying for. Let the teachers have the freedom to teach just like they get to do in the charter schools that the big campaign donors love so dearly. Our second problem is needing real jobs in all communities, not just the lucky ones. Part-time minimum wage jobs without benefits do not lift anyone out of poverty. Imagine if instead of hundreds of millions in tax cuts to foreign corporations that are already here, that we gave state guaranteed expansion loans to Mississippi Main Street companies like Womble Machine Shop or McCurdy Construction. Those jobs are companies creating real local jobs. Our third problem is the brain drain. Mississippi is losing our graduates to other states faster than any other state. You shouldn't have to go to another state to visit your children and grandchildren. Sure, the Mississippi unemployment rate is the lowest it's been in years, but so is the rest of the country. The real problem that is that our unemployment rate is still one of the highest in the country, and even worse for our 20 to 24 year olds at 14.3% which is exactly why we're losing them to Atlanta and Nashville. Imagine if instead of corporate tax cuts, we offered Mississippi Main Street companies that for three years we would cover the health insurance of each Mississippi graduate they hire and keep employed. Or imagine if we were to repay the student loans each year from Mississippi college graduates that go back to work in the Mississippi hometown where they graduated high school. Our fourth problem is lack of an educated workforce. This has been absolutely obvious for years without wasting scarce tax dollars to conduct a politically self-serving study. It would have been far better to spend those tax dollars to help lift everyone in all communities. First, every single Mississippi graduate should have one year of free community college, career and technical, or on-the-job training. Second, Give every high school graduate a free chance to attend our community colleges and become certified as a plumber, an electrician, or many other jobs where they actually stay in their community and contribute to it and call it home. Our fifth key problem is ranking last in mental health again. Simply put, our leaders must quit pretending that mental health or addiction are choices and treat them for what they are. 
mental illness that directly impacts them, their families, their communities, and all of us. But because of tax cuts, those in need end up in our jails and prisons instead of getting help. A nice start would be paying these workers above minimum wage and increasing community program involvement with mental health treatment. Our sixth problem is the tax shift to our local communities so politicians in Jackson can proclaim we shrank government. The simple solution is this, stop the tax shift. Start returning 18.5% of sales taxes collected in the counties back to those counties for roads and bridges, construction and maintenance in all 82 counties. Increase the city sale tax diversion back to 20% for more local control and also return to the counties one half of the home insurance premium tax for firefighting service improvements so that everyone gets lower home insurance rates. And finally, quit cutting basic services and forcing the school districts, the counties, and the cities to raise the local taxes to provide the same necessary services. These are real solutions that improve the real lives of the state of the state. Unfortunately, these solutions don't have lobbyists or campaign donors. We have the money in the Capitol building in Jackson. We just have the wrong priorities. Good night, God bless America, and the great state of Mississippi. You've heard the status of the state's economy and the challenges lawmakers face. Watch the debates unfold throughout the 2018 session on MPB's At Issue, where we provide in-depth coverage and analysis on a wide range of issues every Friday night at 7.30 only on MPB-TV.